Hello everybody, welcome to Statistics and Theory. This is Dr. Vahid Aryadust. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a linear mixed effect model in Jamovi. If you have not downloaded Jamovi, please go to the website and download Jamovi on your machine first. So here's an outline of what I'm going to discuss in this video. First I will talk about mixed effect models and I will introduce the concept of fixed effects and random effects and then I will elaborate on random slopes and random intercepts. Then I will show you how to organize the data, uh, do model fitting and model comparison in Jamovi, then I will uh, demonstrate how to check the assumptions of the models, followed by uh, examining the variance components, uh, which um, also includes the mean um, of um, the data, as well as uh, inter, uh, I mean intra-class correlation analysis, or ICC. So what are linear mixed effect models? Well, um, linear mixed effect models are very useful models, which are essential tools for analyzing complex data sets, especially those with hierarchical or clustered structures. These models provide um, a very flexible framework for handling dependencies that often arise in such hierarchical data or cluster data, if you will, which are not properly accounted for by traditional li uh, linear regression techniques. Um, this is a linear regression model in which uh, the y or the uh, dependent variable is being predicted by uh, the intercept, which is the population intercept. So I'm going to write intercept or population intercept which is different from the random intercept, which I will discuss in a minute, as well as a slope. So this is basically the slope, a population slope. And of course, there is an error, which is represented by the eta. So this intercept uh, on this graph, right on the right-hand side, is where this regression line meets or intersects the y-axis. It's right here. So this one is the population intercept intercept represented by beta sub index 0 so beta sub index 0 which is a baseline uh, for our model in addition we have a slope that is how fast uh, the line increases or the line goes up and the slope right here uh, right here is, I hope you can see that, uh, is basically the population slope. Population slope. In a regression model, and nothing more. But there is a problem with regression model. As you can see, there is a large amount of variability uh, just around the regression line. Some data points fall above and some data points fall below the regression lines, and it's consistency consistently like that uh, across, I mean, along this line. So can we capture um, this kind of randomness or variance um, around the regression line using any specific model different from regression model itself? Yes. And that's where the idea of uh, linear mixed effect models comes into the picture. Uh, let me erase these so there will be enough space for drawing more lines to conceptualize the idea of linear mixed effect models. A linear mixed effect models uh, model is actually an extension of a ra uh, of a uh, um, regression model. So from the regression model, we can arrive at a linear mixed effect model, which is right in this line. The formula reads uh, y, which is the independent variable, index ij, is predicted by the, the intercept of the population, which is exactly the same thing, the, the same term, which was used before, plus a random intercept. You see, this is a random intercept, but this is a new thing. And plus the same uh, population slope, which I just mentioned before, but also plus a, a beta index 1j, which is actually a random slope. So here we also have a fixed slope, which is the slope of the population, but alongside that we have incorporated a random slope into the analysis. 
So what does this slope and also the uh, random intercept look like? Um, if you consider this line to be, I mean, the, uh, the uh, horizontal axis to be, for example, something like time, and this is the amount of y over time, for example, in time 2, then time 4, then time, time 6, uh, something like that. Uh, right, time 2.1, I don't know if it makes sense to have time 2.1, time 2.2, and so on and so forth. You'll see you can uh, actually uh, track every student over time. You can track, for example, a student uh, who started around here. Let me choose a different color and uh, changed in this way. This is a hypothetical student whose regression line is represented by the green line and whose intercept will be right here. You see there is some difference between his or her intercept with the population intercept. And in the same way, the slope of the regression line for this particular person is somehow different because that's why the two lines are intersecting at this point. It's different from the population slope. Um, in the same way, you can imagine that, well, there are many other people, many other subjects, if you will, um, who have different uh, growth over time or different uh, uh, shapes data over time. For example, another person whose data starts from here might have um, actually changed quite significantly over time from here, intersecting the other two lines all the way up to uh, the higher areas of the graph on the right hand side. So this person has an intercept of close, closer to zero but again you see that there is some difference between the intercept of this, of this person and the population intercept. So these two intercepts, intercept 1 and 2, are known as random intercepts and let's go back to the formula. They are represented in this formula by B or beta in subindex 0j. That's the random intercept. In the same way, since they have random, uh, different slopes, which are s significantly or at least visually different from the slope of the main or population slope, uh, thus the slope can also be referred to as a random slope. So in fact, we have quite a number of random slopes with plural s and quite a number of random um, uh, intercepts with plural s here. What a uh, linear mixed effect model allows us to do, to do is to capture this variability in the intercepts and the variability in the slopes, which also is referred to as randomness. So it allows us to capture that randomness and hopefully uh, um, explain uh, why uh, why these variable the, the observed variability is happening and also improve the fit of the model to the data set. In the same way, let me just continue to say that in the same way you can imagine or draw other lines for other people. So sometimes these lines could have uh, you know, the same slope. For example, this, this is increasing in exactly the same direction as uh, the population intercept is increasing. So here the intercept is different from the intercept of the population, but the slope remains the same. Another example is, let's choose another color like this purple. Um, another example is this one. So the slope of uh, line A and line B seems to be the same to me, um, but the intercepts are different. And sometimes the intercepts could be the same. For example, these two people um, intersect exactly the same person, the same, uh, so, sorry, the same spot on the y-axis, but their slopes is different. For example, they diverge from each other. I'm specifically referring to person C and person B. So this is, again, another type of randomness. In conclusion, in a, a linear mixed effect model, uh, there are two random components. One is random slope, and the other one is random intercept. Sometimes we incorporate 
both of them into our model and sometimes we incorporate only the random slope and uh, occasionally we may have random slopes but no random intercepts. So there are different scenarios that we can imagine for a linear mixed effect model. I hope this um, brief um, presentation of what random slopes and random intercepts are uh, has demonstrated um, how you can move from a regression model to a linear mixed effect model. Now let's move on to uh, the data layout. Um, here uh, I want to uh, stress that we need to convert our um, data set, if they are in a wide format, into a long format. So the long format is typically what many uh, statistical packages need and use uh, in order to be able to run a linear mixed effect model. I mean, if you look at this slide, it's very obvious how to move from a wide format and convert it to a long format data set. Um, for example, here we have a team and we have three variables. Points is one variable, assists is another variable, and another one is rebounds, which is another variable. This is something that I have found from the internet, by the way. It's not original with myself. And then you move assists as one variable under points as another, uh, which, uh, which uh, creates another column or another, let's say, a block of data. And then rebounds also move to right here. And, and then the people will be the same people. For example, A will be A, B will be B, and C will be C, and so on and so forth. If you uh, sort this out, you will get something neater and more tidy. For example, if you're using Excel, you can easily sort uh, from A to Z based on the team variable, and you will get a format like this. You don't have to sort it in this way, as long as uh, the long format consists of the different variables that you have been measuring. This is what long format is. And for this presentation, I'm going to use this data set in Jamovi. I'm going to show you how to use, how to find the data set in a minute. Just want to stress that uh, this is also long format data in which uh, subject comes first. As you see, subject number 1, 1, 1, 1, uh, in time 0, 1, 3, 6. Uh, who belongs to group 1, everything is uh, here uh, replicated, uh, has achieved these scores, 296, 179, and so on and so forth. So this is the block for the first person. And the data block for the second person, uh, likewise, is created in the same way, as so on, and so on and so forth. Our dependent variable is the last column. So I'm going to uh, toggle back to Jamovi and show you where to find this data set. Actually, the data set is already incorporated into Jamovi. Uh, please click on the hamburger menu right on the uh, top left corner, and then click on Open. Click on Data Library. Under Data Library, can you see this uh, arrow? Uh, you can um, navigate through the data sets using this arrow, actually. So. Um, in, in the main library, you should be able to see general analyses for uh, linear models. If, if you click on it, you see quite a few data sets which are available for free. The one that I'm going to use for this demonstration is called Wixel, and it's used for both ANOVA and mixed effect models. I don't know, ha uh, I don't know much about the um, theoretical framework that was used to generate this data, so I'm going to uh, use it only for statistical purposes and no theoretical purposes at all. So if you click on Wixel, and the data will be open, and as you can see, it's exactly like the data set that I just showed you in the slide. You still do not have this variable because uh, we haven't created it yet. But once you run the analysis, if you like, you can also create this variable, which represents the residuals. So let's go through the analysis. Um, in order to do the analysis, I will uh, have to install the linear models first. And in order to install this, you got to go through the modules. And under the Jamovi library, you should find the module linear models under available and click on install. 
and it will be installed. So take your time, go through this, this long list to find the model first. And after you have found the model, you click on uh, the, this drop-down menu and select Mixed Models. Now I think this video is becoming very long. Uh, please watch the following video in which I'll continue how to do the analysis. Thank you for watching.